very descriptive of how we do it. So this move is called step through punch. So we're just going to change the timing. So instead of step through punch, we're going to punch step through. Basically the same movement. Okay. So from here on out. Okay. So it's just the timing. There are two drag steps. Okay. So drag step. It's the back leg drags. Okay. And I go forward. So there's drag step. Okay. Simple. Camp, camp was very simple. The terminology is very simple. Okay. So what I'm doing now is the same principle that we were using a moment ago. And you know it's the lead hand. So the lead hand is going to go. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, a drag step is an incomplete from crossover. Okay. So from crossover, we just go here. So again, it's making it more dynamic where we go here. Okay. So the mistake I see a lot of people make when they do drag step is they do the second drag step, which is here. So what they're doing is they're crossing the line and they're blocking themselves from forward movement. So a lot of times you see people do drag step this way. And you see it's, it's restricted on how I move. Okay? So it's very difficult for me to close that gap. So we're keeping my toe heel line, good chemical principle, and point of origin. Okay? And I go through. Now when I hit him, just get on the line. So his center line. So we're both walking off our center line. So when I go, punch, I step off the line. Sometimes they don't move at all, okay? So from there, load, okay? And that way, if he goes to counter, say he goes to counter with his backhand, okay? I'll still catch him, and his body punch might catch me, but, you know, this one is gonna open up if it wants you. We limit our, our forward move, movements, we can't, can't drive forward, okay? But the second drag set is this one, okay? Because now we're going to hide, hide what we're doing. So we're moving, we hide, okay? So we'll hide, so we can kick them back, okay? So usually when I do it, I'll go here, boom, kick, and back again, all right? So you're hiding the fact that you're moving forward. So when you're normally moving, you're just moving, and you're going to move in with that, kick here, kick to the head, okay? So this one, you bring it behind the front foot because you're going to use get your distance by the length of your leg. Okay, all right. So you can hide that forward movement with that fake jab. Okay, so get a little reaction. Hand drops, kick high. Okay, hand goes up, kick up. All right. So just in your in your spot, drag step, kick. So this is where. The push drag comes in and you come in, so he comes, go push drag in. So you got to push drag in, close that gap. So if he attacks with one punch, one punch back is, is a waste of time. Okay? Because he's been tra trained to punch. Okay? And nobody gets out of it and you just pour burn the energy. Okay? So one punch, okay, when I call him, I gotta go, oh we just did. Okay. So Instead of countering with reverse punch, you may be quick, you know, you may, you may settle in, in that deep reverse punch and he'll be there long enough for you to go boom, okay? More times than not, he's in and out. Boom, so he can't catch him. So we're going to use what we just did, okay? One, two, okay? Gotta stay loose. So just like walking when you walk, you know, you're nice and relaxed. <coughs> He's moving in coordination. <clears throat> so when he attacks me with that reverse punch, I go one, do just a reverse punch, okay? Okay, I go one, and I just walk. One. So it's, it's a smooth action. One. No tension in it, I'm just hit it, okay? So try and stay loose when you come. Okay, so, <clears throat> round test kick, okay? So, Generally, a lot of people will kick from, from where they are, okay? So when I try that round test kick, I get a good solid kick, you know, along with them. We don't do bad, actually. Here, and it runs through my body, so this is my center line. So a lot of people kick, okay, from here. So it's good, strong kick, okay? 
Okay, whether it's to the body or whether it's to the head. <clears throat> so, how do we make my kick quicker? Okay, and stronger. So, what I got to do is I got to shorten the distance because <clears throat> when I throw a kick from here, I basically have the toe heel line and the toe horn and I kick. Okay, so I'm traveling probably. 160 degrees on the circle. Okay, so my speed is my speed, so I can't kick any, any quicker from then. So how do I make my kick quicker? And it is so. Like I say, from here, okay, I'm not quite on 180 degrees. I'm not quite on straight line. So I'm off. So I'm losing about 10 degrees here. When I make contact. I'm losing about 10 degrees, so it's about 160 degrees. So I'm going to shorten the kick, okay, by shortening the circle. So I'm going to step here, now the target is moved closer on the circle. So now my kick is going to, okay, it's going to be slightly shorter, which is going to make it quicker, okay, and because I'm not hitting almost on the top of the circle, okay, because when I reach the top of the circle, my power is expanded, and it's coming back, okay? So I'm going to hit them up the circle. So shorten the degrees from about 160 to maybe 140. So now my kick is shorter, and usually it's stronger. So I've moved it here. So now I'm coming from here, and I'm going to kick them here. So when I kick them, okay, the kick is shorter, and it should be quicker. And don't Move forward. Okay. So you're there. You just so you have this part of movement. Okay. Where you know you move step. Okay. Okay. If you see the other stance, okay, even better. Okay. Just switch again. Because when I go this way, you know, I can expose myself a little bit along for that punch. When if I'm not the stance zone, when I move, the other moved, I kind of cancel out that back arm. Okay. So he's really kind of got his front arm, maybe his front leg, okay? So I'm having a move and I cut that line, okay? And I drop that kick, shorten the circle, no parallel. Oh. Okay, well, so now it's working more as a sparring situation. It's not live where I can get hit back, so we're still safe for practice. But it is not going to be as static. So let's just start with that just for a couple of minutes. Maybe one person do four or five. Next person do four or five reverse punch like we did this morning, where we have here and back there. Yeah. So if we look at we look at this with two parts, we're now going to do it as a partner drill. We're going to give the signal for the strike. So again, it is not like we, we can start at static for a few, and then we've got to get more dynamic. So we're both in our fighting stance, we'll be hopping. When my hand comes to my ribs, Anthony will reverse punch, okay? Here. And then when my hand comes up towards my face, again, still reverse punch. So here, hop. And so we're here, so we stay hopping, hop. Hop. Oh. <laughs> so, you see now, we, and we don't have to do a thousand, okay? So it's not yeah. crank the rhythm. So we just hop when you're ready, hop, hop when you're ready, hop. Hit the target. Hi. Don't, you know, <laughs> teeth don't miss. But as you're coming in, try and think about getting your punch in and out quickly. But this time from the fighting stance, and again, we can start just in a straight line and we can start slowly. And with your partner, as you get more comfortable, you can get more dynamic, you can start moving around the floor, make it more realistic. But this time, when my front hand goes up, and again, note that although I'm not letting Anthony punch me in the face, my hands are always at the targets. It's where I want the punch to land otherwise, because if we practice missing, we're going to miss. It's muscle memory. So we gotta practice being on target. When my front hand comes up, it's gonna be a jab this time. So front hand up, up, jab, and back, okay? Front hand comes up, jab, and back. 
the back hand, or the, the rear handle is still reverse punch. So here, punch, here, punch, here, <laughs> punch, here, punch. When we get a bit more comfortable, again we can be moving, and then when I'm ready, I make sure you do it fast. So there's no point of, here it is. You know, we gotta be moving quickly the whole time, okay? Front hands are jab, back hands reverse punch. Jab, back hand reverse. If you do both, one, two. So we go there, we go front, up, back, up, two, up, up. So now you have all the options there. You can do them in any order you want, as many as you like. Go! So if you imagine this is his face and his head before he moves, and his body is here after we go and out, okay? Now, we already looked at them what happens if. He moves again, so what after that we had where we went through here, he moved, we follow, we try to catch. So we look now at, at another strike we can use. Whether it is one, two when he moves, or if it's just from reverse punch and he moves to one, it's what else can we do to follow. And this is where I like to look at the feet. Now we've looked at the roundhouse kick. And the roundhouse kick, as Anthony has already shown us to, to speed it up where we stepped off to land. If you look at your footwork from your reverse punch, it actually sets up the step. Okay, it's there. Because if I go one, two, one, two, I have already stepped off that line, I broke that line. So something that may be a natural follow would be the roundhouse kick. So if we look at it that way first, I can go one, two, stepped off, and again, maybe he moves back again, three. If I think I move back the third time, the way I follow the punch, it would be the same. We go one, two, three, and we follow with the kick, okay? So this will be the first thing we're looking at. I'm going to move it off from there. So we've done our one, two, he goes in from reverse. I'm going to go one, two, roundhouse kick. But I'm going to make sure I step off the way Anthony showed us. One, step off, boom. The kick is part number two. The question asked is, if I have the distance here and then I am here, but I'm too close for the kick, you know, what, what then? Well, the answer is, if I have got here and I am so close here, I've landed my, my, my punch, which means I've got my score, I don't need the kick. We have our chasing, we go one, we go two, and we open the hip, okay? This step opening the hip works for most of your kicks, you know, depending on what your preferred kick is, depending on your ability with the kicks or the height of your kick. This movement of step and then opening your hip, yes, number one, roundhouse kick. If you want it, and depending on the situation, number two, leg kick. Okay, you could front kick, but I wouldn't. But then if you want to do something different, so this time then we're going to put this for me here, okay? Yes sir. I go up here, I get all my hips to open, I drop here, okay? So I go one, two, okay, here, here. One of the problems that you know you find is, okay, I have this movement. And I do it really well. Okay, so when I'm there, my hand is just, you know, he's just waiting there. You know, as soon as I move, he's just gonna let me have it. Sorry. Like, oh. Okay. So even though you have the footwork and the drills, you have to find your entry into, into your opponent. So when you're sparring with your partner, okay, you gotta test him to see what his reaction is. Okay. So you know, you test him a little bit. Okay. So what I did there was, in this fighting stance, I tested. What did he do? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So he did nothing. Okay. So I see he's not doing anything on this move. So that means when I go, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. So I'm going to hit him. Okay. So I don't just walk up to a guy, you know, and fail and go, because I don't know what his his reaction is going to be. So I've got to look and see, figure out what his reaction is. 
Okay, so this time, you know, when I go, okay, he's gonna block that. So give him that one to block, and then because he's, he's occupied with that one, so then I'm gonna hit him with the second one. So there's my first idea of how I'm gonna enter my opponent. Okay? So I gotta figure out what his reaction is. Whoa, like that. Okay? So he's a mover, okay? So he moves a hand. So that allows me to do <coughs> one of one of our our favorite techniques, which we call pass the ball. Okay? Now, we use pass the ball. Normally we I use it in an opposite stance, but because of that big movement he does, okay, I'm gonna give him that hand, okay? And then it's like so we got a ball or a glove. Okay, okay. okay, so ready? Okay, flying stance. Ready? Catch. Okay. Okay. Ready? Catch. Okay. Ready? Okay. Catch. What happens? Okay. Kind of thing. The reason is because when I did that, I deflected it. Okay. So because something happened with the path, it's like a goalkeeper in goal. He kicked the ball. He has the ball. He has it. And somebody touches it with their shin, the ball goes that way. Because he can't react. Because he's already set his mind to move one way, okay? And when the ball comes and it changes direction, he can't react to it, okay? So, when we do pass the ball, we switch and go to this side, okay? So, this time he's a mover, okay? So, it's gonna, okay? so I'm going to give him that front hand. This is my attacking hand. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass the ball, Bang. okay? So, my attack now is, because I've tested to see what his movement is, I give him a finger, okay, and I go through, okay? And again, it's on the line, okay? Okay, so, I'm on, the, I'm on the attack line, I'm on his center line. So I'm going, he has that coat, he thinks. He's not watching this one, because this one's not moving. So when I go, switch it. Okay, so now we have this move, okay, and because he's a mover, he moves, boom, okay. But I'm going to give him something to, to work with, okay, and come in the other side. So we're doing control falling again, and we're doing Kempo basics, drag set, okay, simple like that, okay. So we're all, okay, it is very difficult to block that. 